Hefeng County in central China. One of the most isolated areas of the country. It looks beautiful, but this is home to one of China's biggest social problems. We're on our way to meet the kids who've come to be known as the left behind generation. An astonishing 61 million children left behind in the villages and towns of rural China while their parents work in the big cities. After months of negotiation, the local government has let us in to film. They've assigned us 15 minders. The ABC's Chinese producer, Zhang Qian, makes the introductions. Uh, this is Mr Xu, the principal yeah. of the school. Today, she'll be helping us talk to the kids. <laughs> At Xie Ping School, about 40% of the kids are growing up without parents. And how old are you? Uh, I'm 30. It's the first time they've had a visit by a foreign reporter. Oh, she's very good. <laughs> how old are you? Um, 13 years old. 13, wow. And what's your name? My name is Li Kui. Li Kui, nice to meet you. Li Kui hasn't seen his father for four years. His mother visits once a year. I like to be with my friends. So I'm going to be alone. The Chinese residency permit system, called the Hukao, effectively stops parents from taking their children to the cities with them. That's because public services, like schools and hospitals, can only be accessed where you live. If you move, you then have to pay. And for most factory workers, that's way beyond their means. Li Ikui says he needs to make sacrifices just like his parents. On the weekends, he goes home. But to get there, Li Ikui has to walk up the mountain for a couple of hours. And like most left behind kids, he's being looked after by his grandparents. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> Parents of the left behind are willing to sacrifice a family life in the hope that the money they make will provide a better future for their children. When he's old enough, 
Lee Ikwai wants to leave too. Many of these kids may become part of what's being called a damaged generation. Millions of children suffering from emotional trauma, depression and anxiety. The Chinese government has only just started admitting the enormity of the problem. Their response has been slow and small. They've sent in social workers to five provinces, but they'll only be able to help 1% of the left-behind children. The kids here haven't seen any social workers. Local officials say what would help most is for the central government to reform the residency permit system. To understand the true scale of the plight of the left behind kids, you have to go where there is no help at all from the authorities. This is Shi Chu He in neighboring Hunan province. We've sent the ABC's Chinese producer and cameraman here to film. As a Western journalist, I would be stopped by authorities. Here, 80% of the kids are growing up without parents. Some return from time to time to visit their children, but many are never seen again. The emotional and psychological trauma under the town's peaceful exterior is imploding families, the core structure that has sustained rural China for centuries. Social worker Pan Ya Yun is on a mission to help the most damaged kids. She understands their pain. Pan Ya Yun was a left behind kid herself. She works for a tiny Christian NGO called Children Charity International, and she treks all over these mountains to get to the kids. Today, she's come to visit 10-year-old Liang Ming Jiao and his seven-year-old sister, Liang Ming Jia. They've been abandoned by their mother and their father, who's working in the city, hasn't made contact in years. Their grandparents provide basic care. So you three sleep this bed. Pan Ya Yun has managed to track down their father. She's taking photos of the kids to send to him and is about to surprise them with a call. Mm. 
<laughs> the boy can't believe it. His sister is hiding outside, but ultimately she's persuaded to talk to him. It's a shaky start. Pan Ya Yun knows it will take years to re establish any relationship, and she also knows. It's the only hope for these children. Back in town, Pan Ya Yun is joined by the founder of the NGO, Joseph Lim. They're visiting 14 year old Xiang Ling. With no parents at home, she's become the primary carer of the household. She looks after her grandmother, who's had a stroke, and her three younger cousins. She cooks and cleans and goes to school, and she's been doing it since she was 10 years old. Not surprisingly, the pressure can get too much for Xiang Ling, so Joseph has organised a sponsor to help her financially and emotionally. Like many left behind girls, she's lost a childhood. <laughs> The parents in this household do call and come back once a year, but they're not there for the key moments, the milestones in their children's lives. Xiang's little cousin's greatest wish is to have a birthday cake. She's never had one. Mm. 
有什么话特别想对他们说的吗？你有什么愿望？妈妈不会回来。嗯。Just up the road, a grandma is venting her anger. She's not coping raising her granddaughter. Sixteen-year-old Xie Bing Xin's mother left for work in the city and remarried. Now, her grandmother doesn't want her anymore. Xie Bingxin often runs away. Pan Ya Yun and Joseph want to remove her for her own protection. Do 一致的表情，就是不会变变化的那种表情去回应你的问题。嗯，所以是是需要更多的时间去跟他建立关系的。Xie Bingxin is typical of many of the left behind cases they try to help. Many have never known love, only rejection, so they become totally withdrawn. Joseph says it will take years of work to begin the healing, to restore a trust and build self-esteem. And we always tell them that, you know, compared to any children outside, you are the same. You have a name, you are a human being, you are of a value. And, and we, we come here because we love you and we value you as a human being. In the hills above town, a crisis is brewing. A 14-year-old boy they've been supporting says he wants to quit school. <laughs> Pan Ya Yun and his grandmother talk to Xiang Biao. He says his life is finished here. 我以为我老公不想读了 
They can't convince him otherwise, so they call in Joseph to try and talk him around. Xiang Biao has no plans about where and what kind of work he'll do. Xiang won't change his mind, but most concerning for Joseph is that he wants no support or contact when he leaves. Xiang Biao's parents abandoned him when he was a baby. After four years, Joseph and Pan Yayun thought they were making progress with him, so they're deeply saddened to see him go. And they feel the cycle is destined to continue. Joseph's NGO has built a drop-in centre at a nearby town to provide a safe place for 200 children. Here they can get a bed, a meal or just talk. Pan Ya Yun has managed to get Xie Bing Xin away from her angry grandmother. Rebuilding relationships and providing hope is the key to saving this generation of left-behind kids. Otherwise, the costs will be massive. Of the 61 million, one third, which is about 20 million, will get involved in short-term or long-term criminal activities. I can't imagine that what that will do to China itself. Another one third, another 20 million might be in mental institution, short term or long term. Back in Hefeng County, the local government is trying to deal with the problems too. They're starting with the basics. With help from Chinese NGO Free Lunch, they're now providing two meals a day. Previously, many children only had one. Many of them were stunted in growth and suffered from anemia, four times as much as city kids. Now they have protein with every meal, and it's having an impact. For Li Yikui, the first boy we met, who is missing his mother so much, there's some good news. Mother Zhou Chong has travelled 24 hours in a bus to see him for the first time in about a year. Mm, 
他肯定他自己心里也承受有好多事情，他只是不说出来。你在物质上满足他，他想要什么你你给他买。始终是买买不了那种母子那种亲情的。我来提。The grandparents have prepared a feast for her return, and they slowly get used to each other again. Then she gives Li Ikui some presents. <laughs> but she has a much bigger surprise. When he starts high school in two years, she will pay for Lee Kwai's schooling so he can come and live with her in the city. For most of the millions of children who've been left behind, the promise of a better life may prove elusive. For them, China's economic progress has come at a price, a price that's still to be fully understood. But for one boy, the ordeal may be soon over.